the truth is finally coming out and mainstream media is putting a spotlight on it and that is of course the debt crisis and we have to address this i'm going to be playing a clip from uh Chamath as well to really kind of support what's been happening how they are lying to us and why now is the time to buckle up and get ready for what's about to happen welcome to the channel everyone my name is nick for those that are new to the channel hopefully by the end of this video you do become a subscriber so like i said a lot of these mainstream media websites are now addressing how the world is drowning in debt where the next crisis could start and it's all around this debt spiral but it's not just the united states it is the global economy as a whole this is one of the largest problems right now and it's crazy because if you go back in time right you look at what's been happening in just the last couple months around debt it is reaching unsustainable amounts that are at it every single month we're not even talking about the actual figure that is almost 36 trillion it's the amount that is at it every single month the actual budget deficit which is just ridiculous and how all of this is showing zero signs of slowing down and in fact they don't want it to slow down janet yellen and all of the big players keep telling you 50 trillion by 2030 and they say it so calmly as if all right that's fine but they don't question who's going to be buying the debt Who's going to want to buy U.S. debt at that point? And what's funny about this is this article was written back in July, July 15th, for an example. And if we actually look at this, right, U.S. public debt is at the highest level ever in peacetime. $34.62 trillion. Uh, guess what? We're at $35.7 trillion. That's how fast the debt is increasing and at this point they said annual interest payments on the u.s public debt are more than one trillion dollars the u.s national debt is growing by one trillion every 100 days and roughly 3.6 trillion per year to put this into perspective the entire spanish economy this year is about 1.7 trillion this is the fastest rate of increase of any developed country the IMF, which usually focuses its messages on developing countries, is urging the United States to urgently address its mounting fiscal burden and predicts the debt to GDP ratio will hit 140% by 2032 compared to 120.7 today. We are no longer talking about a potential U.S debt crisis or just global debt crisis no we are literally living in it right now this is a problem now at the same exact time that we know this is happening we are being force-fed ridiculous data that is blatantly false for an example here we have just from august New data shows U.S. job growth has been far weaker than initially reported. And I'm sure that you all now know about this, right? They had to go back and they revised the, the job growth data. This is almost like an everyday thing now, though. Like, we constantly are now hearing about how this data and that data is false. They don't want to tell you the truth. The same exact thing goes with inflation. They keep saying inflation is dropping. Inflation is back to, you know, this level and that level. Every single time that I go into a grocery store, and I'm sure that a lot of you can speak on this as well, you're hit with a massive price tag on almost anything that you are buying. And even over here we have, and this goes back to March of this year, how CPI calculations misrepresent real inflation. And it's because they don't include necessities they don't calculate necessities which allows them to lie every single time that the cpi data comes out and even more recently here we have we are still measuring inflation all wrong this actually breaks down on how we are measuring it 
wrong and why crucial information is actually not included in these reports. This is a big problem, especially when you are reliant upon this data to make fiscal policy changes. This allows them to manipulate fiscal policy. It allows them to do whatever the hell they want with the printers. They want to print money. All right. Hey, guess what? CPI data is, is doing really good. CPI is dropping. All of a sudden, you, you start to see you know, easy money coming back where they can just print out of thin air and just say, all right, yeah, this is fine. It's all sustainable, right? It reminds me of 2023, where we saw bank collapses happening, and Janet Yellen, yet again, said that the U.S. banking system is sound. And guess who also echoed this? Jerome Powell. They said banking liquidity is stronger than ever. Now, I want to play this clip here real quick from Jamath and listen closely to what he is mentioning around these types of uh, announcements by government officials to skew your focus away from the facts. The, the markets have had to intervene and we have essentially decoupled um, what the government thinks is happening with what the capital markets needs people to know. And that's a really unique dynamic. Like, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not nearly as successful as Stan or have been in the markets as long as him, but in my 20 years, this is the first time I've really seen that. So just to give you a sense of this, you know, the markets are now acting to establish inflation expectations that the Fed just seems to not want to do anything about. And what was, so for just to give you guys a sense of this, like, you know, when in February, the markets really kind of had its first capitulation. What happened was that all of a sudden people digested all these facts that Stan just said and realized, wait a minute, like all of this money is going to drive prices higher. And so what they did was they took the, they took the yield on the 10 year bond up by like 150, 100 basis points and the markets freaked out. They went from like 0.75 to 1.75. And the Fed came out and said, Hey, hold on. Nothing to see here. This is everything's going to be fine. But then everything since then has been tr sort of leading to this realization. Commodity prices are up 50%. There's this kind of like joke that like, you know, you see a bed of lumber moving across a railroad. That's like a billion dollars of lumber just because of how expensive it is. You know, there are shortages everywhere. You'll be shocked to know that today Chipotle put out the following guidance, which is they said they are increasing the minimum wage to $15. And that within three years, you can make $100,000 a year at Chipotle. Yeah. That is as much as some engineers and coders in the United States. Dara Korshashawi, the CEO of Uber, said on uh, the Uber earnings call last week that the um, average hourly rate that some drivers in New York, Uber drivers in New York were getting paid was 38 bucks an hour. What? $38 an hour. So what does all of this mean? I think what Stan is trying to say- $100,000 a year. But we're in this weird place where we've decoupled. The government institution that's responsible for fiscal stability and then the overall capital markets used to work in tandem and they are no longer working in tandem because you have a narrative and a set of data points that aren't supported by the facts. And so this is an interesting thing. So in the CDC versus the American people example, there's no way to push back. Right. I mean, governors can act independently. Cities will act independently. But at the end of the day, you know, the teachers unions are working with the, the CDC, the school camps have this guidance and you're stuck in this morass. In the capital markets, that's not necessarily true. And so you can change and you can, you can re-rate asset prices based on sentiment. And I think what everybody is saying in this example is we're past the emergency. We've put too much money in the economy. We need to reopen and we now need to face the fact that there are massively rising prices, which means that there will be inflation. And if you don't act, the capital markets will continue to act for us. And so this is an example today where you're just seeing a bloodbath in the markets. And by the way, the, the only time that two government officials tried to be on the either side, Janet Yellen last Friday 
kind of casually in an interview, kind of put her toe out in the water as Treasury Secretary and kind of said something that said there could be inflation and literally was hand slapped and had to put out something that disavowed her comments less than 24 hours later. And this is exactly what I mean, right? You know, I love the fact that he mentions that fiscal policy and the decisions are made off of this falsified data. This is exactly how they manipulate decisions around fiscal policy. And it's all by plan. So when you're sitting there and you're questioning, all right, are these people this stupid? Like, do they not know how, you know, finance actually works, even though they are working for the U.S. government? No, they, they know exactly what they're doing. They're just playing into the plan that they have been given to, you know, push forward. And it's all to support the elite agenda as well, by the way. But also, yeah, you know, as we really look at any type of government official that wants to speak out, yeah, they have to immediately walk it back. So if there's going to be a bank collapse tomorrow, and if it happens, you won't, you won't hear talks about how, oh yeah, banking liquidity is weak, or oh, the banks are weak. Maybe you should get your money out of the banks right now. No, they, they will never tell you what to actually do. They will continue to tell you the opposite. Oh, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. Everything's all good. Keep your money in the bank. This is a very big problem with mainstream media. And also, it's another big issue with the data that we are given around very important information. Now, also, like I said, this is all by plan. They want to usher in a complete reset. And even more recently, on October 11th, Central Bank Body calls for more detailed monitoring of bank liquidity risk. This is from the BIS, the Central Bank of Central Banks. And this is regarding 2023's banking turmoil. So now they know, listen, they know exactly how weak these banks are today, especially if they are carrying. CRE loans, commercial real estate loans. And we already know that for the first time ever, I think CNBC, the mainstream media, actually put out a legitimate report on banks being weak. Now, they said that these banks may be at risk of failure. Hundreds of banks, by the way. And this is because of CRE loans. Now, this was back in May. We now have the BIS saying, hey, we need more detailed monitoring for bank liquidity risk. And it's funny because we know that U.S. banks are failing on operational risk. And this is all regarding liquidity, loans, cyber attacks. I mean, major banks have been going down. Bank of America just recently went down. And it also does take me a little bit back to the whole 2023 discussion on banks and if banks would essentially freeze accounts and make sure that you are keeping money in the bank. And there was actually a great article written about this. There was a hedge fund manager, Hugh Hendry, that actually issued a major warning on the U.S. banking system and the American economy as a whole. He said that mass panic and capital flight away from the U.S. banking sector is entirely justified. He says that a further decline in the M2 money supply, which in part tracks money in liquid checking accounts, could convince the U.S. government to step in and prevent citizens from taking their capital out of the banking system. Sometimes it's kind of relevant to panic. I would recommend you panic. You've seen the biggest waterfall decline in M2 right now. M2 is deposits, not loans. That's deposits fleeing the system and going into money market funds. And we now know today that money market funds have well over $6 trillion in them. So that $6 trillion is preparing for a recession or some sort of major crisis. And if we think about that, right, when we look at the banking sector, the Fed, the government, they want to protect these big banks. They want to protect banks in general. And when we think about that, the best way to do so is by preventing citizens from taking money out of the banks, freezing bank accounts. And a lot of people think that this is just like fear mongering or it's some sort of like conspiracy theory. 
But yeah, they could easily freeze bank accounts. They could step in and prevent you from taking money out of the banks. And I know that a lot of people also go back to around roughly like 2010, where the FDIC actually passed a law, it's a bill, um, that allows them to actually bail in banks, meaning they are utilizing customers, so me and you, bank deposits, to actually make sure that the bank doesn't collapse. At a time where the FDIC only has roughly like $180 billion in reserves to protect roughly 16 to $17 trillion in deposits, yeah, it seems as though bail-ins will happen if banks started to go belly up just like 08 again. You need to be aware of what's happening here because you are not going to get the legitimate data from the government. We now know that. They have been lying to us about this. We know that something very, very big is on its way. And in my opinion, it's going to be a debt crisis. It is going to be a debt crisis like no other before. It is going to cause a very significant collapse like no other before. And this is where we start to see a complete reset of the system. This is where we start to see the agenda being pushed heavily that you know they want, which is a digital financial system. This is where we start to see everything change. So with that being set up, the guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on because of more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.